Hey everybody, my name's Harry, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the world's first N20 built motor. So this motor has forged CP Carrillo pistons and rods, uh, steel sleeves, it has billet, dowel pins uh, as a semi-closed decking method. It also runs a um, cut ring head gasket. It has an aftermarket turbo that's slightly larger than a stage two turbo off the shelf. Um, so today's video is gonna be a bit of a disassembly as we're now in our fourth rebuild with the motor because unfortunately during a simple maintenance exercise to replace the valve cover gasket, I had accidentally dropped a T30 Torx piece down the injector hole into the cylinder. And basically how that happened was I was just undoing the little covers that the spark plugs and the injectors are housed in. And as I was undoing the nut, I lifted my socket up and the piece fell out of the socket. Like it was supposed to be clipped in, but it fell out, went right down the injector hole and straight into the, into the uh, cylinder. So at that point it was easily fixed. I could have been just grabbed a magnet and fixed it, right? But I didn't have a magnet. That was my biggest problem. So I had to put the car into neutral. There's a lockout key on the ZF gearbox box to lock it into neutral. I then had someone in the car um, operating the steering and the ignition was on to try and activate the electronic steering, which ended up not working, so it was pointless, but this is what led to the ultimate failure of the motor. We pushed the car forwards and then I said, put your foot on the brake so it doesn't roll away and I will turn the um, ignition off. Did not think because foot on brake plus the ignition actually turns the motor on. So the motor actually attempted to start with that Torx piece in there. Now, of course, there was no spark plugs or injectors, so it wouldn't have actually started, but the motor turned over and stamped that T30 piece, not only into the piston, but into the cylinder head. It's done some substantial damage. I'm probably looking at, I don't know, 3,500 bucks just, just alone in replacement parts to get it to fit, to get it to work again. So what I'll do is I'll show you a bit of the damage, I'll show you a bit of the motor and, um, a few other things with the gasket because there was also during the teardown I noticed there was a bit of head gasket damage and I'm going to put this down to a uh, super knot condition I had. Now I had this super knot condition on a um, day when I was running the JB4. Now originally I was running an off the shelf stage 2 tune with the JB4 on this motor because getting a custom tune was a little bit challenging I guess you could say. So what I was doing was adding four pounder boost to the OTS map, which is about 19.6 to 20 pounder boost. So it was giving me about 24 to 23 and a half pounder boost uh, on 98 Ron, okay? Now this is completely fine for this motor and this turbo setup, not damaging at all. But what happened was the JB4, for whatever reason, overboosted to 35 pound, right? Now this turbo's bearings are only capable of 31, but because it was not a large amount of time over that threshold it didn't actually do any premature wear or, or damage to the bearings anyway but what happened was it caused super knot codes and it shut down injection in cylinders two three and one now the car was fine compression tests have resulted fine i haven't had a single problem with the motor since then and since i've started removing the jb4 for boost purposes and i'm now using it for purely uh, aftermarket fueling um, but unfortunately, whatever's happened during that process is even with the ARP head studs I have installed, there um, there's 10, 11 mil studs torque to 95 foot, foot pound, which is a lot of torque, like 140 newton meters for everyone that's uh, metric. So what happened was it obviously lifted the head just enough on cylinder one where the exhaust gases have escaped under the firing because I have a firing, which is a mechanical seal. And it's obviously burnt out the part of the composite gasket because it's composite on the outside of the firings. Now, luckily, it's only burnt out the side of it that kind of seals between the coolant jacket and the cylinder. But because the firing is there, it actually doesn't prevent... It's, it's still a seal, essentially, so it prevents the water from getting in the cylinder. Um, now, it's done that on both sides of the of the actual cylinder, on cylinder one. Um, look, this has never been a pro it hasn't been a problem. and It probably wouldn't have been a problem in the future, but had that happened again, it might have burnt further through the rest of the gasket and then allowed the oil and the coolant to start mixing, which is a, it's a giant pain because unfortunately with this type of gasket, you've got to replace uh, not just obviously the whole gasket, you've got to replace the fire rings and then you've also got to get the, um, the, the block's generally fine. You don't really need to give it um, a resurface, but the head has to be resurfaced. I'm a little bit skeptical reusing these um, Cut, like the cut ring grooves in the head, you've got to root mill it, and it's about nine thou off the surface of the head, if that's the case. And I mean, it's not too bad from a compression standpoint, because 
This gasket is actually the thickest gasket you can get on the market. Um, the, fact, the factory thickest is one mil. Standard, these motors come with a 0.7. So when you see 10 to one compression ratio in 20, it's running a 0.7 mil gasket. So if you need to remove material or just run a one mil gasket, you're gonna either drop the compression or match the compression. Um, and in this gasket's case, I originally did drop it to about 9.7, 9.8 to one. Um, but with all the resurfacing I've had to do and all the problems I've had in the past with just head gasket installs, because unfortunately, this gasket was brand new prototype off the shelf kind of deal. And when I installed it the first few times, I had rings move on me and it distorted the top of a cylinder at one point. So I've milled the block quite a lot. So my compression now with this gasket is 10.31 to one, um, which isn't like overly high considering the original, originally this stock motor was 11 and I dropped it to 10 just to run a bit more boost. Um, but in saying that higher boost doesn't, higher compression doesn't worry me because it just run less boost. That, that, that's fine, but it is a pain because unfortunately that head, even if I could reuse it, it's been milled that many times now that I'm at the point where it has to be chucked. Uh, I do have a spare head, which is great, and I can get that fixed. It just needs two new exhaust valves because they're bent uh, during one of these head gasket install issues, unfortunately. I tried a new head just to try and eliminate the problem. It didn't work. So what I'll do is I'll show you a bit of the damage now. I'll just give you a bit of a disclaimer. The corrosion that you can see on the top of the pistons, that is just because as you lift the head off, coolant seeps into the cylinders. I did drain a lot of it, but some of it's drained into the cylinders and then it's thus drained through the piston rings and into the actual um, sump because these pistons actually have um, quite a lot of play when they're cold because it takes uh, operating temperature for them to fill the bore because the type of aluminium that they've used for the CP pistons. So I will show you a video of the play, but it's completely normal for a cold motor. Just so we get that right, because I know some people are gonna be like, oh no, that's bad, like it's really bad. Piston slap, no, it's fine. So another thing that I'll also add too is that the bores are fine, even though there is moisture in the, or, or coolant, I guess you could say, the, the actual bores are fine, then they're, they're not gonna be a problem. It's just the piston tops. And if anything, the corrosion is actually just the carbon, not the piston itself. That's actually got a bit of corrosion on it. So what we'll do is I'll show you some of the damage and um, we'll investigate from there. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our lovely cylinder one. Now, like I said, the, com the uh, corrosion in this is just because the coolant hit the, the, the carbon deposits. Because if you can see the aluminum underneath, it's, um, it is actually fine. If you look down the side there, you might be able to see there's a bit of coolant between the piston and the actual bore. This was that play I was talking to you about. I don't know if it wants to do it. There, there you go. That's the play, that's, that's actually quite normal. Um, for these types of pistons. They expand up to like 15 or 20% of the bore. Um, so as you can see in this bore, that is the damage it did to that piston crown. That's pretty much cactus. Uh, and then I've got cylinder steel sleeves. And then, see, so these are the uh, the dowel pins here and they actually um, drop down quite a bit down into the coolant jacket. They don't add any coolant differences or pro prohibit effective coolingness. It just adds to the rigidity of the actual block. Um, you can probably see too, I've got time certs in the block because of a head stud issue I had where I was shipped the incorrect ARP head studs, which was uh, awesome. We had to make little dowel pins as well because I had to drill, over drill the holes. Uh, that's obviously my aftermarket turbo that I had custom made. It is larger than your off-the-shelf stage two turbos. So this is the head gasket. Now, as you can see on the head gasket here, We've got some little, see so if you can focus on it. See the little grooves in the top there? Uh, maybe not. Yeah, you can just see them. So they actually cut into the cylinder head to create a me mechanical seal. So realistically, this gasket could fail, but the cylinders would still be sealed to the head. And that's actually what's happened here is I've had, so the flat side of the actual rings, it's on the block, because this is the flat side, and then the serrated side goes into the head. So this is the bottom of the gasket here, all right? So obviously what's happened in that event where I've had a super knock because the JB4 over boosted is it's lifted the head and it's burnt through the gasket and it's actually, because this is an aluminium layer here, is it's burnt through the composite material and pushed the aluminium out of the way. If it had burnt through this, it would have connected the coolant and oil jackets. Um, luckily all this silicon was all fine. So that yeah, that was pretty bad, but we we're pretty lucky that the gasket was fine and that nothing else happened. Good start. Um, and now what we'll do is walk over and I'll show you the cylinder head because the cylinder head's actually quite, um, it's quite non-existent now. So if I lift this up, very, very tight for room here in the moment. And as you can see here, the poor old cylinder head 
that has got quite a substantial amount of damage. That is that is 100% a write-off, and those valves will be bent. Um, they are brand new valves too, ironically, which is why you got numbers on them because they haven't been replaced last time. They were bent from the uh, first time the motor blew, actually. So unfortunately, this head is it is cactus. It is toast. I know there's a bit of corrosion here. Not that it really matters. This head's dead, but um, that's mainly just because I've taken the head off and it's just been sitting out in the weather for the last day or so. But going forwards, what that means really is that I'm going to be putting um, a new cylinder head on, which I already have. Um, I'll be putting that gasket back on it. The engine's got to come out of the car. Uh, I'll be selling the car with another motor just because I don't need to have a car sitting around for a little while and I'll rebuild the motor over the course of the year with some extra goodies planned. So I plan to do a port and polish head and probably looking at an even larger turbo setup. Um, it looked tuning side of it's a nightmare, especially because it's remotely. It's the whole reason why half of my dyno results don't even exist at the moment. You know, besides getting remote tuners to try and sort you out because it's a bit, it's a little bit of a challenge to try and find someone or then again, like the time zone differences between America and Australia. Um, and on top of that, E85, this uh, turbo that I've got now uh, at about 22 pound of boost, that I think it was like 3, 3,500 RPM. It just dies. It can't handle full e, 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 e fuel. So, and yes, I know you could run like E30 or E40, but running more ethanol is better. Ethanol is a way better fuel. It is safer. It is not proof. The amount of times that I've had weird issues with like JB4 or whatever I've got, like you know, even even the tune has over boosted or it's been a really hot day. Like I have a good intercooler, like a stage. It's a performance stage three. It's actually probably the biggest intercooler on the market for the F generation cars. But even then, on a hot Australian day, I had intake air temps at 70 degrees, and if it wasn't for, for uh, running ethanol, I would have had catastrophic supernova events. It's not even funny. And I know this because the day before, I had 98 in the car, and I had a supernova event at like 12 to 8 psi boost. And it's just, it's really not good. Like, it, it thrashes your pistons around. So I've already had piston skirt wear from some of this before, so I know to avoid this as much as possible. And ethanol is just an amazing fuel. The amount of times it just saves your ass, especially if you run, have a run lean condition or something. It's better to do that on ethanol than it does on 98 because 98 gets so hot, or 98 or 93 for you US guys. It gets so hot in the cylinders that you end up melting piston tops, valves, etc. Now, ethanol is not like the best band-aid fix in the world, but it is a way better fuel to run than 98. Unfortunately, it just uses 40% more flow. So I've had to develop a custom port injection setup. Um, I was using a charge pipe port injection setup, which actually was not um, configured at all for the N20. I had to get um, Terry from BMS to get some firmware loaded for it to work. Um, it is working now. It's not working very well though. There's still a few more revisions we need to put in there, but the motor's out of the car, so I can't really do that. So um, going forwards, really what that means is that our new pistons will be going in, 84.75 millimeter, which is 25 millimeters 0.25 millimeters, sorry, already over the oversized piston. So 84 is stock, 84.5 is oversized, and 84.75 is like double oversized. Uh, the car is running 84.5, hence why. Um, and we did coat the actual piston skirts by plus three thousandths of an inch to make up for um, room in the ball because we had to rehone it a little bit and the piston skirts were a bit worn. So, and because at the time there were also the 0.75s didn't exist, we didn't have a whole lot of an option in terms of. Um, making up clearance in the bore. And this, what we did was a viable solution. It's it's not good if, in the sense that if you run a low on oil, you'll wear that skirting away and then therefore your pistons are no longer at the right size and you'll have piston slap or loss of compression, etc. cetera. Um, it was not uh, honed out with a torque block either, but we don't have one, no one has one. We could make one, but it's just ridiculously expensive for what it is. Um, I mean, the, the compression is still really good. It's nothing like a race engine, but it's still like, it's, it's on par or better than stock, so. Doesn't, doesn't worry me. Um, we'll do the port and polish head, a larger turbo, probably like an EFR 9180 or something. I'm gonna try and look at, to try and tee that up. Um, the engine alone will handle easily upwards of 800 wheel, 900 wheel horsepower. It's just more or less just supporting mods and also tunes, getting that sorted. That's a nightmare, absolute nightmare. But um, there will be results coming. So myself, uh, and then there's Andrew and Ken, which will also be contributing to the channel. They're building their F30s, because this is an F22 originally, um, and both of them have a originally a 10 to 1 compression motor, whereas mine was originally 11. They are also building their motors. Um, their builds will vary slightly and their power goals are very slightly to mine as well. But they should be giving some actual results soon. They're in the process of actually building the motor. Um, they'll probably get the results out well and definitely before my motor is even put back together. Uh, I had planned to go to the quarter mile actually in two days time, but this happened, so shit happens, you've got to roll with it. 
it is what it is. But if you stay subscribed to the content of the channel, um, there'll be more vlogs, reviews, um, and as we go along, it won't just be about build processes of the motor. It'll include things like um, mods and bolt-ons and drive days, etc. So there's a lot more to come from it. Um, I'll do another video of um, another teardown later on because I've still got to take the block out of the car and disassemble all the rods and pistons. I've got to get cylinder three's rod and I've got to get the crankshaft tested, crack tested, and for straightness as well. Um, because I don't know if I've bent something too, but that uh, that torx piece survived. So ironically, like it's in my tool kit now, like it, it's fine. It is what it is. I mean, it's carbide steel versus aluminium, so who's going to win, really? But anyway, if you guys like the content or like this video at least and think it's informative, please feel free to subscribe because we will try and upload more content. It may not be weekly at the start, but once we get a, a few videos rolling, we'll definitely try and keep it to a, a regular schedule at least. Anyway, um, anyway, guys, thank you a lot. See you in the next.